Hey guys, Luke back with another Elden Ring video. This time it's going to be all stone sword key door locations and what you can find inside of them. I'm going to let you know how many keys it takes to open each door, where the doors are, and any important notable items that you can find inside of the doors. I will leave out things like golden runes, stuff like that, the minor things that don't really matter. And I'm not going to do full walkthroughs of any dungeons that get unlocked because that would just take way too much time for this video. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thanks for watching. Leave it a like. Subscribe, all that. Let's go. The first two imp statues can be found here in the round table hold. And you'll need three keys in total to open the two statues. And inside you'll find the Crepus's Black Key Crossbow, as well as the Assassin's Prayer Book. And to find the two imp statues, all you need to do is head to the room with Hugh in it. Head down the stairs over here. Make a left at the bottom. You'll need one key for this one, and that will give you access to the crossbow over here in this chest. And the next statue is right here. You'll need two keys for this one. And inside you'll find the prayer book right in this chest. The next location I'm going to show you is here at the very beginning of the game, at the Stranded Graveyard. This is right after you do the tutorial. You'll need two stone sword keys here, and that unlocks the French Folk Heroes Grave Dungeon. In this dungeon, you'll find the notable items of Dragon Communion Seal, Erdtree Great Bow, which you'll need a bow to knock down the thing for that, the Erdtree's Favorite Talisman, the Banished Knights, Oleg Ashes, and Golden Seed drop from the boss, and then there's some minor items that are Lightning Grease, Dragon Moon Grease, and a Stone Sword Key. The next Imp statue is going to be down on the Weeping Peninsula in the Tomb's Word Catacombs. And I'm going to start from the Church of Pilgrimage because it can be a little tough to find the entrance. And you'll find the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 9 when you go inside, and that'll only take one Stone Sword Key. You'll find the dungeon right behind this thing here. And then you'll find the imp statue just right after the beginning of the entrance. And like I mentioned, it just takes one key. And the item will be sitting right here. This next imp statue location only needs one key to open, and it's down here at the Weeping Peninsula. I'm going to start from the 4th Church of America and make my way over to this Weeping Ever Jail here. And the key will unlock access to the boss fight for the ancient hero of Zamor who drops the Radagon Scar Seal. I can't show you killing the boss myself because I've already killed this one. But you will find him inside and he will drop the Radagon Scar Seal and you just stick the key in right here. The next statue is going to be in the northern part of Limgrave, up at the Summon Water Village outskirts. And I'm just going to head right over here. We'll need one key, and that will give us access to the Green Turtle Talisman. You'll find it right here. You'll see some turtles hanging around. And then a room full of turtles. And you'll find the talisman right here. The next M statue location is going to be here in Stormvale Castle at the Rampart Tower. To open this stone sword key door, you'll just need one key, and inside you'll find the Godskin Prayer Book as well as a Godslayer Seal. 
And to get there, all you need to do is head out the door, jump across here, land safely here, and then drop down. Drop down once again. There are going to be some rats in here. That should take care of them. You'll put the key here. And then you'll find your items in these chests. And you'll also get a shortcut to the Castle Gate area. Right there. And that's what's in this one. The next imp statue is also in Stormvale Castle at the Rampart Tower. And you'll also just need one key for this one, and then that will unlock the Iron Wet Blade, the Miser Cord, and the Hawk Crest Wooden Shield. And like before, we'll just go ahead and jump here. Except for instead of going down there, we're just going to drop down under here. Turn around, head through this door. Jump over right here. You'll find the statue here. And inside you'll find some enemies. Just, just kill them real quick. There is the wet blade. And the hot crest wooden shield. And the Misericord. The next imp statue location is here in Liurnia of the Lakes, and you'll find it inside of the Cliff Bottom Catacombs. I'm going to head from the Liurnia Highway north so you guys can find the entrance. And this one will only take one Stone Sword key, and inside you'll find the Nox Mirror Helm. Keep your eyes peeled for the entrance because it is pretty hidden. I believe I passed it. If you can't find it, just follow the wall and eventually you'll run into it right here once you're inside you'll just head on down it's not too far from the entrance Careful of all the imps. Go ahead and just keep on going forward. There's a trap right there. Careful of it. And you'll find the imp statue right here at the top of these stairs. Careful of the big guy over there. And the loot you're looking for is sitting right here. The next imp seal door I'm going to show you is here in the crystalline woods in Liurnia of the Lakes. And just nearby, where this marker is, we'll find the entrance to the Academy Crystal Cave. This one will take two stone sword keys, and the notable items you'll find inside are two spells, Crystal Release, Terra Magica, a crystal staff and a stone sword key. And once you get over here, all you need to do to get inside is insert the keys right here. The 
The next imp statue is also in Liurnia of the Lakes, but this one is harder to reach than the other ones because it's in a late game area. To reach the Cathedral of Manicellus and then this area, you'll first need to go through the Ainsel River and kill Estelle Naturalborn of the Void, and then that's how you'll get to here. And then once you are here, we're going to make our way over to the Lunar Estate Ruins, and we'll need one Stone Sword Key, and that will give us the Cerulean Medallion plus two. Be very careful in this village. It's a little bit uh, overwhelming because there's about 50 monsters and they're all strong. Just going to go ahead and use it and run down in. And you'll find your item right here. And I'm going to start Altus Plateau here at the Erdtree Gazing Hill. And we're going to make our way down through this cave over to the Golden Lineage Everjail. And we'll fight Godefroy the Grafted. And he will drop us the Godfrey's Icon Talisman. And it only takes one key. Stick our key in here. She's the old disc. And once he's dead, he should drop you the God Freeze Icon Talisman. The next imp statue I'm going to show you in Altus Plateau is here at the Unsightly Catacombs. It takes two keys, and I'm going to be headed from the Abandoned Coffin Grace. The notable things you'll find inside of this catacombs is the prattling plate that says apologies, the winged misbegotten ashes, the perfumer Trisha ashes, and then the ghost glove wart 5 times 1, grave glove wart 4 times 2, and grave glove wart 5 times 1 as well. And you'll find the entrance right here. The next imp statue I'm going to show you is here near the Erdtree Gazing Hill. And we're just going to go up into the Wyndham Ruins to this marker. And that's where we'll find a imp statue that requires one key and will give us a Pearl Drake Talisman plus one. key in here. Try not to die to the big skeleton. Run past these guys. 
And you'll find your item right back here. The next location is also in Altus Plateau at the Erd Tree Gazing Hill. And from here we're going to make our way up to the Wyndham Catacombs. And inside of there we'll find the M statue and it only takes one key and it'll give us the Lightning Scorpion Charm. Go ahead and ignore the boss, it's not too dangerous. And you'll find the entrance just sitting right here. Be careful of the trap right here, and head down the elevator. Head on through, there's a bunch of imps in here, and there's a couple up ahead with lightning pots. An imp to your right. I've managed to dodge nothing. And then down here we're going to take a right and then head up a ladder. I'm going to get my HP up a little bit. Because this knight's pretty annoying. I'm going to go ahead. Go ahead and kill him because he's pretty annoying. You could probably run past him if you're just trying to get the item. But he will follow you up the ladder, so just be, be wary of that. There's a trap there. A imp. It takes one key. I already put it and then died. But I'm back, and the item is right here. Next up in Altus Plateau, we are also going to be heading from the Erd Tree Gazing Hill, but this time we're going to be going up this way towards the old Altus Tunnel. It takes two keys to open up, and the notable items that you'll find are the Bolt Drake Talisman plus one, the Great Club, the Troll's Hammer, and there are upgrade materials as well. There's six times Smithing Stone fives. There is one Somber Stone four, one Somber Stone five, and one Somber Stone six. And now I'm gonna go ahead and head on over. Oh, there's a giant there. And you'll find your your door right here. And next up in Altus Plateau, we have the Sainted Hero's Grave. To get here, you can come from the outer wall and just wrap around and go down through. Or just come from this grace here. And then once you're down inside of here, the door is just right by the grace. And inside, we'll find the Crimson Seed Talisman. And next up in Altus, we are also in the Sainted Hero's Grave again. And like I mentioned earlier, you can just come from the Rampart side path and head down in. And then once you're here, we're just going to make our way through. This one takes a little bit longer to get.
and keep on running through. And it'll break the floor right here. You'll need to lead all these guys into this, and that will make it to where they can be damaged. Trying to jump behind them so they got them. Alright, and one more, and the door should open. I think. Oh, there's a lever right here. And then we're going to make our way through, and we're going to ride a saw blade up to get into that door. Go around these guys here. And you'll find your stone sword key door right here. And this one gives you the dragon crest great shield talisman plus one. The first statue I'm going to show you in Kalid is right here at the Rotview Balcony. And we're just going to jump down to the Forsaken Ruins. It takes one key and it will give us the Sword of St. Trina. I'm just going to go over here and fall down. There are two large birds here, so be careful. I'm just going to hurry up and put my key in and run down. And you'll find the sword right here. The second and final M statue in Kalid requires two keys, and it is over here at the Gull Cave. And I'm gonna head from the Astray from Kalid Highway North Grace. And inside of this Gull Cave, the notable items that you'll find are Regalia of Eocade Weapon the Pylory Shield and the Wakazashi weapon as well, and then the Putrid Corpse Ashes and a Stone Sword Key, and then there is also a Somber Stone 5. find the entrance just right over here. The next underground M statue location I'm going to show you is here in the Siafra River. I'm going to start from the Siafra River bank, but if you do not know how to get under here, you can head over to this here, the Siafra River well, and that will be a very long eleva elevator ride down to where I am now. That's the closest grace, the Third Church of America. And then once you're down here at the river bank, we're just going to make our way up over here. And there will be an M statue that takes two keys. It will unlock us an area or an elevator ride up to an area where we can get the Great Jars Talisman as well as unlock the Kalid PvP arena. There is a grace up ahead, feel free to grab it. Gonna jump up here. Up ahead there's going to be some archers and they're very powerful and fast shooting. So try to dodge if you can. It's pretty hard to dodge these guys. They will shoot you in your back on the way up here so... 
bob and weave. They'll probably hit you anyway. And the statue is right here. And I'll not put in the part where I go up the elevator and all that. Because that's a lot of time. The next M statue is underground in Nocron Eternal City. If you don't know how to get under here, all you need to do is go kill Star Scourge, Radon, and Kalid. And then after you kill him, it'll open up a big hole in the ground over here at Starfall Crater. And that's by the Fort Height West Grace. And then once you make your way down underground, cross the big bridge and head over to the Ancestral Woods. Grace is where I'm going to start from. And we're going to go down there and get the Mimic Tier Ashes, and it's only going to take one key. Be careful jumping through here. Go ahead and cross this. Fall down. And at the end of this hallway is where the door is. It takes one key. And there is one enemy inside. And inside this chest, find the Mimic Tear Ashes. And our final underground location is going to be here in Noxtella Eternal City. To reach this area, you'll need to do Ronnie the Witch's quest line or defeat the Twin Gargoyle boss fight. Make your way to the Deep Root Depths, and then right about here is going to be a coffin you can ride over to the Ainsel River. And then once you're at this grace, we're going to head up that way. You'll need one Stone Sword key, and this will give you access to the Night Maiden and Swordstress Puppets Spirit Summon. I actually died doing this the first run through. So just as a note, you are not invincible when you're opening the chest. Put your one key in right there, and then the chest is right over here. The first imp statue I'm going to show you in Mount Gelmer is here in the Seathwater River. And then we're going to make our way up to the Seathwater Cave, and it takes two keys to enter. If you don't know how to reach the grace that I'm at now, you can head to the Erdtree Gazing Hill and just cut through here, like so. And the notable items that you'll find in this cave are the Full Mushroom Set, the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation Talisman, and that's it. Everything else is minor items like golden runes and poison bone darts and stuff like that. Here we are. The next M statue I'm going to show you in Mount Gelmer is in the Volcano Manor area. You can actually go ahead and go to the Prison Town Church Grace if you already have it, but if you don't, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how to get there. And this one only takes one Stone Sword key and gives you the Crimson Amber Medallion plus one. You can start by go ahead and talking to Tanith and getting the Drawing Room key. Head over here and open this door. In the back right hand corner where this painting is is an illusionary wall. And then you can just go ahead and run straight through.
And now we are at the grace that I mentioned earlier. Go ahead and open this door. And we're going to make our way through. that. Seem to be stuck on a bag or something. Head down through here. And the statue is right here. I'm going to go ahead and kill this dog. And there'll be a knight or er, virgin maiden. Don't know why I wanted to call it a knight maiden. And you'll find the talisman sitting right over here. The last imp statue I'm going to show you in Mount Gelmer is here in Volcano Manor. And I'm going to start at the Temple of Igle Grace. This is where you kill the Godskin Noble boss fight. And then I'm going to head over and up this here. And the interesting items we're going to find is the Seedbed Curse, Royal Knight's Resolve, a Somberstone 7, and the Dagger Talisman. And this one takes two keys. Up ahead, there's going to be a Virgin Maiden. You can just run past and jump through the window. Still got me. Open the door here. Kind of bugged out there. It was kind of weird. And to the left here will be a shortcut. And then we're going to go right. Go ahead and open this door here. I'm going to go ahead and kill this guy because he's going to continuously try and stop me. I think he's immune to fire. Yeah, he is. So let's just go ahead and leave him. Go ahead and drop down to the left. If you stay to the right, the snake there won't attack you. Head through here. The dagger talisman is going to be on this corpse right here. Go ahead and drop down. There's an enemy right here. You'll find a rune arc. Drop here. Do a running jump over to here. And then fall right here. I'm going to go ahead and kill all these guys because they're extremely annoying. You'll find the seedbed curse right here. I'm gonna go ahead and run out and grab the seven and then show you where Royal Knight's Resolve is.
If you want to, you can jump down there and head back to that grace. But I'm going to go back in and get Royal Knight's Resolve. And you'll find that right here. As well as a shortcut that will take you back to the main part of Volcano Manor. The one and only imp statue in Landell Royal Capital is here in the Oriza Heroes Grave. If you don't know how to get here, you can come up to the Capital Rampart Grace right here. Go back this way and drop down here and then head over that way. Or you could just come from over here. But once you're down in here, you can get the Golden Epitaph weapon for one Stone Sword Key. And the first imp statue I'm going to show you in the mountaintops of the giants is here near the Freezing Lake Grace at the Spirit Collar Cave. You'll need two stone sword keys to enter this cave, and you'll get the Black Flame Ritual spell, the White Reed Set, the Godskin Swaddling Cloth, and then there are some large runes, like a hero's rune in there. There's also some 12s and a 10, I think. And you'll find the statue just sitting right here. Next up we have two of them, and they're both inside the same place in the giant conquering hero's grave in the mountaintops of the giants. To get to this, it's a little bit confusing. You can head to the giant's grave post after the big chain link, fi the big chain link bridge, and then head through here, hop across right here, and that's how you get into this place. And then once you are here, near the grace, there's a statue. This one gives you flame protect me, and the other one gives you the cranial vessel candle stand. And now I'm going to make my way to the other one, and it's also just one key. Once you get up here, you'll make a right and go up the stairs. Open the statue right here. And you'll find the weapon. Oh! Don't fall down the hole like I did. Hopefully that serves as a warning for you. And the item we were looking for is right there. And next up we have the one and only statue in the crumbling Baramazula area. To get over here you'll first need to kill the fire giant over in Mount Tops. And then you'll make your way through to the Dragon Temple Altar where you'll kill the Godskin Duo. And then we'll make our way over to the Dragon Temple Lift. And to go up that lift we'll need two stone sword keys. And that will give us access to an area with a golden seed, golden lightning fortification, Alexander will be there if you did his quest line, and you can get Shard of Alexander. Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook 4, as well as some Smithing Stones, like Smithing Stone 8 times 3, 
Somber Smithing Stone 8, as well as an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. And I'm going to go ahead and head towards the lift. Almost fell. Be careful. Run past this guy. Go through here. You'll stick your two keys right here. And then you'll go up the elevator. And that will give you access to the area that I spoke about earlier. And next up we have the one and only in the Consecrated Snowfield. If you don't know how to reach here, you'll need two halves of a medallion that will grant you access to this area. The first half is down here, underneath this land, in the Albanuric Village. You'll hit a guy that looks like a barrel and he'll give you that half. And then the other half is over in the mountaintops of the Giants. You'll need to go to Castle Soul and defeat the boss and then in a chest you'll get the other half. Then once you have both halves, you can go to the Grand Lift of Rolled and take the lift using that medallion, and that'll bring you up into this area. And then once you're at this grace, the Inner Consecrated Snowfield, we can head over to the Cave of the Forlorn. There's only a couple notable items worth mentioning in the cave, and that is the Golden Order Greatsword, as well as a couple Heroes runes. Those are pretty useful. And you'll find the entrance right here, next to this guy. And it takes two keys. There are two imp statues in the Halig Tree area. If you don't know how to reach the Halig Tree area, you'll first need to go to the mountaintops of the Giants. Head over to Ordina Liturgical Town. There's a puzzle in the town. Solve the puzzle, and then take the portal that's right here. And then once you're at the prayer room, Grace, you can just head out the door. And we are getting the triple rings of light incantation and only need one stone sword key. Let's go ahead and kill these guys real quick. Stick your key in here. And then you'll find the incantation right here. And the last and final imp statue I'm going to show you is here in the Halig Tree, also at the Prayer Room Grace. And again, you'll just need one Stone Sword Key, and we're going to go get Marika's Sword Seal. Run past these guys here. Let's run down here. Do a hop, head this way and jump over. There's going to be a strong enemy that spawns down there, be careful. I'm just going to rush the imp statue and run inside. And once inside, you'll find the Sword Seal right here. And that brings me to the end of this video. If you like it, leave it a like. If you want to see more guides like this one, consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video.